Galatians chapter 1, I want to I wanna read a few verses to you. Uh, I'm going to read the first uh, 10 verses to you of Galatians chapter 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, nor through man, but through Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead and all the brethren who are with me to the churches of Galatia. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins. Bob, we, I, I'd love to have been able to preach this tonight at the board meeting. Hallelujah. Grace and peace. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil age. But I, I got to stop because I got a few things got to say already. You know, back here in verse 1, it's, it's the Lord God Almighty who chooses his servants. He, he does the choosing. He does the authorizing, he does the empowering, he does the credentialing. All we have to do is, you know, you know, when, when ordained people ordain people, all we're saying is we're agreeing with God what's evident in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? Yeah. We're, all, we're just agreeing with God what's evident in your life. It's God who does the calling and the ordaining and the, and the setting apart and the empowering. It is the Lord who does those things. And, and, he, and, and Paul's saying, you know, I'm not a man nor through man, but through Jesus Christ. And, and then he says, and, and he wants grace and peace to flow your way. And then he want, reminds him of who this Jesus is. He's the one who, who died and gave himself for your sins. That you might have a right relationship with the true and living God. There, listen, there's a lot of people that know about God, but if you knowing about him is not enough. You have to know him personally. You just can't say, Well, yeah, you know, I knew I know about uh, Ho Chi Minh, but I never met him. I know about Mao Zedong. But I never met him. I know about Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler and Benito Mussolini and, and uh, um, I can't think of that dictator in Spain. He died. Franco. Francisco Franco. I, I know about him, but I never met him. I know about Winston Churchill. Great, great, uh, great man of the English-speaking world. But I never met him. But I'm telling you, I not only know about Jesus, I know him. Because I've met him. I met him by faith. By grace through faith, he's revealed himself to me. And allowed me to come unto himself by his Holy Spirit and be gloriously saved. He says, to whom be glory forever and ever. And I have to say, amen. Forever and ever. Not just a day or two. Forever and ever. Now, now let's get down to the meat of this thing. Now, Paul's writing to the churches of Galatia. And he's, he's just, he's marveled. There's some... Jack legs that come in there and started adding works with grace. Can I tell you, every time you do that, it rots. Because it's not a true gospel. The scripture says, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you to the, in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. Which is not another gospel, but there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, Paul says, or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we preach to you, let him be accursed. Now they, they, uh, they uh, dressed up that Greek word anathema right there. Can I talk to you in Appalachian? May you be damned. That's what that's saying right there. Now that's pretty strong, isn't it? Can I tell you, there's only one who can damn, and that's God. He's the one who has the final say 
cast him into outer. You understand? Paul says, if you preach any other gospel than the gospel of grace through faith in the finished work of the virgin-born one, be accursed. Now that's stout. That is strong. And he and he says, as we uh, uh, for I. I as we said before, and I say again, if anyone pre, oh, no, I already I already read that one. Uh, verse ten says, "For I do not pers- I do for, I can't even read. Oh, huh, huh, huh. for do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I still pleased men, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Now there are those who come in and they're." questioning Paul and accusing him and uh, of not having the authority and not having the true message of Jesus Christ and not preaching the truth and they're telling well there's more to it and of course the uh, theologians call these guys Judaizers in other words they're saying yeah you get saved by grace through faith in Jesus but it, but you've got to continue to keep the mosaic law and you, the men have to you know the boys have to be circumcised the, you can't eat pork and you can't eat shrimp and you can't eat catfish and you know and all this stuff and you can't do this, and you got to do that, and and you got to you know keep the mosaic law, the ceremonial law. And Paul said that's a bunch of hooey. Now, if anybody, if anybody knew, listen, Paul was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. I mean, if there was anyone, he had the top pedigree. Do you understand? I mean, he was of the tribe of Benjamin. He was educated at the feet of Gamaliel. He, I mean, he knew the law. He was, I mean, he was straight, cut right, all these things. I'm going to sneeze. Yes, praise God. He had the pedigree. And he knew the law inside and out. He could tie anybody up. And he says, it's not by the law. It's not by the law. All the law does, all the letter of the law does is kill. It cannot bring life. Life is only in the Son of God in His finished work, in His holy, perfect person, in His perfect work of living, of fulfilling the law, and His perfect sacrifice on the cross, and His glorious resurrection from the dead. Now, we have a lot of folk out there who are confused about what the gospel is. They don't know, they, they think the gospel is... Do unto others as you'd have them do unto you. No, that's not the gospel. That's the golden rule. Well, uh, uh, well, just try to be the best person you can be. And well, that's nice and good, but that won't save anybody. You know, be honest, and you know, pay your, you know, pay your debts and pay your taxes and. And then do this and that, and be decent and upright, and and be respectable, and that's you know that's great. Be a good citizen, be a good neighbor, but that won't save you. That will not save you. Let me. I, I, I jotted down a few things today about what the gospel, the gospel of God that saves, must do. And I want to share the, a few things with you because Paul says, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from him who called you to a different gospel. A different. A, it's, a, it's another gospel. It's not the same. It's, a, it's another of a different kind. It's not the truth. It's a false gospel. The gospel of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves must, first of all, it must honor God's law. If it's going to save, if, if the gospel, the message of Jesus Christ, if, if the gospel is going to save you, it must honor God's law. Now, God gave us the law so we would know what sin was, without a doubt. But the law couldn't save us. It just revealed our need for the Savior. 
It couldn't, it didn't take away the sins of the world. Well, what was all those sacrifices for? They were to, in obedience to the Lord. They had stayed judgment, but it didn't keep judgment from coming. You see, it just set up, you know, once a year on Yom Kippur, and, and usually it's uh, in late September, usually it's in October. The, the, the one year, the one time that the high priest would go into the Holy of Holies where the Ark of the Covenant was, and he would take that, the, the, that's the blood from that, that lamb, that perfect, that paschal, that sacrificial lamb, and he'd take that hyssop, this big old top knotted weed of a thing, and he'd dip it and he would saturate the mercy seat with this blood, and, and the Shekinah glory of God would come down and consume it. And I'm telling you, that priest had to go in exactly right. Every jot and every tittle had to be right in place. He had to, or, or, the, or the glory of the Lord coming down would consume him, kill him. Exactly. They'd have to, they had to hide a rope around his ankle. Apparently, they've had to drag a few out. And, and, and they, they heard the bells. They, they could hear the bells tingling when he would walk. They knew he was still alive. God accepted the sacrifice and didn't kill the high priest. How would you like to have that job? But all it did was just stay the national judgment one year. They had to do it again next, next year, next Yom Kippur. Next one. And there were many other, you know, all it does, it just stayed judgment. It didn't remove it. You see, the gospel that saves has to honor God's law. And you know as well as I do that we fail at that. We, we start out tainted. I mean, original sin uh, is in all of us. And it traces back to the first parents. If you say, I don't believe that little babies are sinners at birth. I'm telling you they are. If they weren't, you wouldn't have to potty train them. You wouldn't have to teach children to share. You wouldn't have to teach them to tell the truth. They'd have all that down. They know how to lie. They know how to be selfish. They know how to manipulate. I tell you, they don't, they don't take them very long to know how to control things. You know, because their sin nature makes it all about them. And you know I'm telling you the truth if you ever raised a kid. It's all about me. It's all about me. That comes from a fallen nature. Jesus fulfilled the law of God. Now you think about that. Where he didn't sin one time. He wasn't born with sin because he was virgin born, conceived of the Holy Spirit. He started perfect without sin and did not commit a sin. He honored God's law and fulfilled it perfectly for you and me because we couldn't. You see, the true gospel, the, the good news, fulfills, it honors, and it fulfills the law of God. And that's why salvation is only in Jesus Christ. Not only that, the gospel that saves must satisfy God's judge, justice. Now, what do I mean by that? God is angry. Now, I know that's already politically incorrect in a lot of people, even among Christians. You know, there are those out there that, uh, oh, it's getting better, it's getting better. Oh, it is? Tell those Christians who are being butchered in Niger in Nigeria and Iraq and Syria that. It's not getting better. We can have moments of better, but it ain't getting better, pardon my grammar. It's not getting better. 
The only thing that keeps all hell breaking loose is the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit through the church. And as long as the church is here, the lid's staying on the pressure cooker. But when the, when the Lord comes and the trumpet sounds and the church goes out, the lid comes off the pressure cooker. Now we can debate about when is that the beginning of the tribulation or in the middle. It don't make a difference. It's going to happen. Amen. I believe it's at the start. But you know what? It's possible that I'm not right. There's a first time for everything, right, honey? <laughs> Just say yes, dear. <laughs> but it's the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit will continue to restrain as long as there's genuine born-again believers on the earth. Now, so it must satisfy God's justice. Sin must be paid for. Do you hear me? Now, I'm telling you, sin must be paid for. And you, it will either be paid for by you or someone has to pay it for you. Now, the only way you and I can pay for our sin is to go into perdition and be punished forever. Now that's how we pay for our sin. It's, it's, it's eternal death. Eternal damnation. And eternal fire. And eternal darkness. Or, someone else has to pay your debt for you. There's only one qualified to do that. He has to be sinless. He has to have fulfilled the righteous demands of the law of God. And then he's qualified to, t if he's sinless, then he's qualified to take the sin of others upon him and pay your debt in full. Whew. There's only one who's done that. It's not the baptistry. It's not not eating bacon. It's not any benevolent good work that you can perform. It can only be a perfect and holy work performed by a perfect and holy individual. Amen. Only Jesus meets the bill. When He went to the cross, it wasn't because He deserved any of that. It's because I deserved that. And you deserved that. And every human being ever conceived in a woman's womb deserved that. Do you understand? And He took the sin of the whole world upon Himself and satisfied the righteous demands of a holy God and justice was served. Now, we don't understand a whole lot about justice in this day and time that we live in, uh, you know, because of uh, untoward people who manipulate and use the law for, for untoward gain. Well, I'm trying to clean it up best I can. I could almost cuss, but I'm not going to. I know I'm praying that our legal system will become a justice system again. Completely and wholeheartedly without reservation. Instead of this, this twisting and turning and conniving and underhanded backdoor dealing nonsense that goes on too often. The gospel that saves must satisfy God's justice. Jesus took the sin of the whole world upon Himself and paid for it. The, a holy God poured out His wrath upon the object 
He who knew no sin became sin for us. Holy, perfect, righteous, virgin-born Jesus without sin hanging on the cross became sin for us that we might become the righteousness, the holiness, the perfect, clean, clean as white as snow before a heavenly Father. We're getting His holiness, His righteousness, and He's taking our dirt, our filth, our sin, our wretchedness on Himself and paying that debt. The go a gospel that saves... It must, it must honor God's law. It must satisfy God's justice. And, and, it must be free to the recipient. Now, what do you mean by that? If salvation is by grace through faith alone, and not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. That means there's nothing I can do to merit it, to earn it, to deserve it. There's nothing I can do to say, okay, God, I measure up. I, I'm better than these folk. you got to save me. There's nothing like that. Because we're all in the same boat with the same problem, sin. None of us were born perfect, holy, and righteous. None of us, every one of us, entered this world with a sin nature. That's why we age. That's, that's why we pass on. I want you to pray for my, my preacher friend, Greg Collins. He's come here before, uh, in our Fresh Oil New Wine conferences. His mother passed away today. He surprised me in, in near Charleston. I didn't know he was coming. He came to the, my mom's funeral. And uh, there he was. And I don't know, I don't know the details, but I, I, I'm going to attend a funeral. I, I don't, you know, I'm just going. I don't have to do nothing. I'm just going. You know what brothers and sisters ought to do? But no notoriety. No, not just there praying and just trying to be a blessing. Pray for him. His mother was 73. And uh, she uh, she's dancing now. <laughs> Salvation. The gospel that saves must be free. Because in order, because, because it costs so much, no one can afford it. There's not a person in here who has enough of what God values to buy it. It cannot be purchased can't be worked for it can't be kept it has to be freely accepted as a gift that is the gospel that saves that's the gospel that will change your life and take you from 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 darkness to light it has to honor God's law. It has to satisfy God's justice. It has to be free. And the gospel that saves must be available to sinners. Now, I didn't say it was available to good people. There's a lot of people out there who think, I'm a good person. Salvation is not available to you. Because until you see yourself as a sinner, you can never be saved. Salvation is available to sinners. And, and since the Lord says there's none good, no, not one, are you a one? What well, ain't you? You're not good. 
There's none good. No, not one. Oh, you didn't know my grandma. I know I didn't, but God did. And he said, there's none good. No, not one. All of sin falls short of the glory of God. Wages of sin is death. The soul that sins, he shall die. The gospel of God that saves, the gospel of Jesus Christ that saves, has to be available to sinners. And I've shared with you before, you know, when these, these little fellows, you know, these little eight, nine-year-old, seven-year-old come up and say, Pastor Bob, I want to get baptized. Well, a lot of times they want to get baptized because it really looks cool. <laughs> you know, they, they line up here just, you know, it's like, like kids at a ball game, you know, or, I mean, you know, or, or watching, a, watching some kind of activity. They want to watch that, man. Wow. First thing I ask them, do you sin? And as often as not, you they'll get. <laughs> I'd say you, you go back to mommy. We'll talk later. You got to be. You got to realize you're lost before you can ever get saved. Do you understand? And that's why I don't. I don't set no age limit. You know, once a person realizes they sin, they're old enough to get saved. I don't, you know, they might be eight, they might be nine, they might be ten, they might be twelve. I don't know. There's no hard and fast rule. Uh, parents in the home, uh, what they've been exposed to, you know, children's church, Sunday school, vacation Bible school, Bible camps, youth group. Uh, does mom and dad pray? Do they read their Bible? Do they? What do they see? Some kids come to it sooner than others. But the salvation that saves, the gospel that saves, is only available to sinners. Not good people. Not righteous. I should say self-righteous people. It's only available to sinners. And then the gospel that saves... Not only does it honor God's law, not only does it satisfy God's judge, uh, justice, not only is it free, and not only is it available to sinners, the gospel that saves, that brings eternal life, is just that. It has to be eternal. It has to be forever. It's not, listen, God doesn't save you on the installment plan. Do you hear me? What Jesus has done is good once and for all. For He says, it's finished. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. You don't sit down until the job's done. And it's done. Finished. Eternal life is what He offers. Forever life. Never ending life. If it can end, it's not eternal. And that book's a lie. But it's forever life. Now, Paul says to this, these, these fellows, I marvel that you're turning away so soon from Him who called you to the grace of Christ, from, uh, in the grace of Christ, to a different gospel. Dear friends, the devil... He, you know, when you get saved, he's not done. He's not done with you. I mean, that liar will still lie to you. That liar will still try to confuse you. That liar will try to deceive you, and he'll try. And and he, and he's really good at what he does. I mean, he's the best devil ever was. <laughs> I mean, he's good. He's good. Don't be deceived. By his treachery, by his beguiling, by his—I mean, he's been at it forever. Try, he, he'll get us to try to redefine sin, redefine 
holiness. Redefine righteousness. Redefine godliness. Redefine peace. Redefine joy. Redefine faith. He's a liar. He's a liar. I want you to know if you've ever truly been born again, something has begun in your life and it won't stop till you get to heaven in that new body. And then what he's got waiting for us then, he just hadn't told us yet. Do you hear what I'm saying? For the you become a new creature, a new creation in Christ Jesus. And does everything perfectly change immediately? Well, it didn't for me. But it began... And I can tell you, it's continuing on. And I know because I am genuine, I can't dabble in sin. Because when I do, I lose my joy and I become miserable and I become, oh, I mean, I'm a bear. You don't want to live with me. You don't be around me. When I'm not, when there, I'm, I've allowed sin to take uh, residence in my life. When I, and you know, I mean, the Spirit of God starts turning the screws down on me. To well, I got it, man. I just got to give it up. I got to get right with God. And if I let it go, well, I know what happened. The Bible tells me He'll kill me. I. I'll let I'll turn I'll let the devil destroy your body so at least your soul will be saved. Do you hear what I'm saying? Paul says, I'm I marvel. I'm just flabbergasted. Here you've embraced the gospel of grace through faith alone. And someone's coming along telling you you get yeah, you get saved that way, but but water baptism's part of your salvation. You know, performance is part of your salvation. You got to do this, and you got you got to do that, and you can't do this, you can't do that. And and the problem with that false teaching is this: what Jesus done on the cross is good for one time. If you got to go and get saved over again. Jesus is going to have to come and be born of a virgin a second time, live a perfect life a second time, and die on the cross a second time, and raise from the dead a second time. The problem is there's a lot of people in this world, a lot of people in churches who know about Jesus, but they never met him. That's where the confusion comes in. I've read preachers of old, Charles Spurgeon, uh, he, he pastored the Tabernacle, London Tabernacle Baptist Church in London, England for years and years and years in the 1800s. And, and D.L. Moody, who pastored and, and, and preached around the world in the, in the middle to late 1800s. One time a fella come up to Mr. Moody on the street and said, Mr. Moody, over there's one of your converts. And there's some guy drunk in the gutter. He said, well, he must be one of mine. He's surely not one of Jesus Christ's converts. Do you understand? Do you hear what I'm saying? If you've truly met him, oh, it's different. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's different now. I can't, I can't continue in sin and have peace. I just can't. I can't. Because I'm real. I know people say, well, look at David. Yeah, yeah. I bet that was about the 15 to 18 months of the most miserable life a man ever lived before he got right. For the time he and Bathsheba stepped into Sin until he confessed. You read Psalm 32 and Psalm 51 and see if that doesn't explain how a true believer is when they are allowing sin into their life. So true. 
the genuine, true gospel that saves. It honors God's law. It satisfies the justice of God. It is free. It's only for sinners. And it's forever. It's eternal. Now my question to you tonight is this. Is that the gospel that you've received by faith? That life-changing gospel. Lord, I don't have nothing to bring into this agreement, into this covenant, into this transaction, other than all I can give you is my sin and my life. That's all I have. And the Father says, that's all I want. I'll take it. My son's paid for it. I, I'm, I'm not going to remember this anymore. And here let me give you the righteousness of my son Jesus. The blood is applied. Though your sins were like scarlet, now they're white like wool. And now when I look on you, my child, I don't see the hell-deserving wretch, the dark-hearted evil that you are by nature. Now I see the righteousness and holiness of my blessed Son, Jesus. And because of Him, you're in the family and you get to come and be with me one day. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand.